Hey guys, this is Test 39 Game 4. This is the Pet Store Fish game. It's a grouping in out game, also known as selection. We know this because the initial paragraph tells us that the girl is selecting fish from the list of seven J, K, L, M, N, O, and P. And we see the same variables featured in multiple rules, and all the rules are conditional statements. So because we have the same variables in multiple rules, we have reason to believe that we will be able to link these rules together to form long conditional chains, or at least link them together a great deal. So I'm going to write down each rule and its contrapositive and link them together as I go. So the first rule tells us if we have k, then we do not have o. So if k is in, then o is out, contrapositive. If o is in, then k is out. Now the next rule mentions variables we do not yet have on this chain, so I will skip that rule and come back to it when we more have more information to more easily link things together. Next rule says if we have M, then we have O. We've got O right here, so I can stick M right in front of that. Contrapositive, not O, then not M. Now the next rule says if N, then O. So I could include that right here and the contrapositive right here, but I'm going to hold off just because I think that skipping that rule and coming back to it will allow me to link things more clearly. Of course, you could link it now if you want to. You could still end up with a valid product. I just want to make this diagram look as clean as possible. Next rule says if O then P. I've got O right here, so I will link P onto that. If O then P, contrapositive, not P, then not O. Next rule says if P then O, so they're essentially reversing these arrows that we just drew. We had O then P, now they're going backwards, P then O. So I'm going to turn this into a double arrow, which means the contrapositive will also form a double arrow. So not P requires not O, and not O requires not P. And O requires P, and P requires O. It's reversible. Finally, they say if we have O, then we have two O's. I'm just going to draw that on the side over here, if O then to O, it would become pretty messy to link it in on the main diagram itself. Now there are a couple of rules that we skipped. I'm going to go back and link those in. They tell us that if we have M, then we will not have N. That is the second rule of the game. And the contrapositive, if we have N, then we do not have M. Now what else did we skip here? We skipped N then O. I've already got N right here. I can link O to the front of that contrapositive, not O, then not N. And of course, we could even keep going since we know that O and P require one another and not P and not O require one another. One another. I'm going to do that a little bit here, just a little bit. We know that O and P require each other, so I'm going to add to O here that it requires P and then reverse that arrow as well, not P requires not O. Then the contrapositive chain we have that not P requires not O and vice versa at the very front of the bottom chain there. So I know this is really complicated, really messy. If you've done games like the Birds in the Forest game, Test 33 Game 2, or the Fruit Stand game, Test 36 Game 1, your, your conditional chain diagrams looked a little bit cleaner than this one. This one is unfortunately somewhat messy and complicated, and it's even, you know, it, infinitely repeats. You can continue linking forward on and on and on and on. So I had to cut that off at some point, of course, here. You see that even the top chain has P and not P. The bottom chain has P and not P. That's just because of the way in which these things link. It's unfortunate that it's like this, but this is just the nature of the rules, the nature of the game itself. So don't let it get you confused too much. We'll just leave off here and jump right into the questions themselves. Now question number 19 is a typical orientation question. Just take one rule or inference at a time, apply it to all five choices looking for violations. Now we know that M requires O, which requires P and not K. So any choice mentioning O, any choice mentioning M, I'm sorry, must have O and have not K. So scanning through the choices, choice A has M, yet does not have O and has K, completely unacceptable, so A is gone. B has M, O, and K, all three of them, when we know that M requires not K, so B is gone for that reason. And we've exhausted the usefulness of this portion. We also know that, know that anytime we have O, we're going to have two O's, so scanning through the choices, B and D both had only one O, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, um, D had only one O, 
should have had two, at least. So for that reason, choice D is eliminated, and we're down to A and to C and E. Now we can use the rule that M requires not N and N requires not M, and we see that choice E has both M and N unacceptable, so E is gone, leaving C by process of elimination for number 19. Next, number 20, if P is not chosen. So I'm going to make a little in-out table right here on the side. In is the left column, out is the right column. If P is out, we know that P out requires O out and M out. So O is going to be out and M is going to be out. The top chain tells us this. Then the bottom chain tells us that when P is out, O is out and N is out. So we can add N to this list of things that are out as well. Now running through the choices, we see that you know any choice mentioning P, O, M, or N must automatically be eliminated. So B and C both mention M, and we know M has to be out. So B and C are eliminated. And then D mentions N, and we know N is out. E mentions O, and we know O is out, leaving A by process of elimination. And of course, J, there are no rules regarding it, and there's no reason to think that K couldn't be in. So A is our answer to number 20. Next, number 21, if we're trying to get as many fish as possible. So of course, then, then what can't be chosen? Now of course, there are no rules regarding L. L doesn't require anything, so of course, L could still be there when we have the maximum. In fact, we would want to have L there to have the maximum, so B is automatically eliminated for that reason. Now we know that K in requires a lot of things out. When K is in, we lose O, we lose M, and we even lose P by way of not O. So K is in, we're going to lose at least three things. That sounds pretty bad, so A is looking like it's the answer. I'll look at the others, though. M. When M is in, we lose N on the bottom chain here. M in requires N out and requires K out, so we're only losing two. So K in requires at least three out. M in only requires two out. And then, of course, the variable N is simply requiring M out, only one thing out. And P in is requiring K out on this bottom chain right here, P to O to not K. So K is the worst of them, therefore K is the one that would not be chosen to reach the maximum. It's, it requires more things out than does the other choices. Next, number 22, general must be false question. So just run through the choices. Four of them could be the case. Find the four that could be the case. Eliminate them, and whatever remains will be your answer. So A and B are actually identical because they both mention four fish, and they both one mentions J, one mentions L. J and L are the two variables about which there are no rules in this game. So they are essentially saying the exact same thing. They're equally likely to be good, equally likely to be bad. And because you cannot have two right answers, they cannot both be bad here since it's, since it's a must-be-false question. So A and B are both eliminated. Now, if you just want to hear an example of what, how that might work, we could have J, then have two O's and have P. Or we could have L and have two O's and have P, and those could be our four. So A and B are both gone. Now, choice C exactly three things, at least one of which is M, we run into a problem here because if we have M, we have to have O and we have to have P. So M, O, and P sounds pretty good, but in whenever we have O, we have to have two O's. That's the requirement down here, last rule of the game. M in requires at least four things in, not only three. So for that reason, C's our answer to 22. I will look at D and E though. Exactly three, at least one of which is O. We could have just nothing more than having two O's and having P. Or we could have, so that, that would be exactly three, at least one of which is O. This example also serves to prove choice E is possible. Here's exactly three fish, at least one of which is P. So D and E are both good by way of this scenario right here. They could be true, therefore they're eliminated. And C's our answer to 22. Next, number 23, the minimum and maximum numbers if you're having at least one thing. So they're just precluding the possibility of having zero. They're saying zero is not if zero wasn't possible, what was the lowest we could have? What's the lowest and the highest we could have? So we could easily have only one fish in. We could have J be the only one. We could have L be the only one. Those are the two about which there are no rules. We could even, you know, it looks like we could even have K be the only one because K is not forcing anything else in apparently. So we could certainly have only one. So for that reason, D and E are automatically eliminated since they list two as the minimum. So now we're trying to figure out what's the maximum we could have. 
So we would, of course, we'd want to have both J and L in because they don't require anything. They're easygoing. So we want to have max, maximum, we're going to put them in. Then we know that, you know, O and P don't really cause problems, it seems. We could have both O and P. That's already letting us have four. Now M and N and K remain. And we know that M conflicts with K. So we're not going to have both M and K. K in requires three things out, at least O, M, and P, as we saw before. We're not going to want to have K in due to what we learned from 21, that we wouldn't want to have K if we were going to reach the maximum. So K is going to be out. This leaves M and N, and N in requires M out, M in requires N out. So for that reason, we're going to want to have exactly one of M or N, but it's not possible to have both. So we've got one of M, N, that's one. J and L, that's two. O and P, that's another two. 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5. So it's possible to have 5, but we can't have any more than that because we cannot have both of M and N, and we can't have K yet still have M, for example. And we couldn't have K in because then we'll have O and P out, and that's not going to let us reach our max. So 1 is the minimum, 5 is the maximum, so B is our answer for 23.